What's going on, everyone? Mike Cadillac, Taylor Kyles here for CLNSV Day inside of Gillette Stadium as the Patriots just lost to the Los Angeles Rams 28 to 24. They fall to 3 and 8 on the 2024 season. A reminder, we're powered by Prize Picks and Game Time. Head over to Prize Picks, use code CLNS for $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. Head over to Game Time, code CLNS, get you $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Taylor, a lot of coaching decisions, a lot of questionable coaching decisions factored in to this Patriots six point loss. First and foremost, the big one, Patriots decide not to shadow Puka Nakua with Christian Gonzalez. Instead, they play him on the boundary the entire time. That allows both Nakua and Cooper Cup to go for 100-yard games today. What did you make of that? Do you think it was the right decision? Do you make it was the wrong decision uh, in, order to Patri in order for the Patriots to try and win this game? Overall, I absolutely think there were some questionable calls in this game, questionable decisions, but more than anything, what I was disappointed in was the execution off of those choices. Now, a lot of them were literally coin flips where you can do one thing or you can do another. There's not a whole lot in between. At the end of the day, coaches need to put their players in the best positions to succeed, but at the same time, as the player, you have to do your best to make that a positive play based on your coach's decisions. Now, when it came to Christian Gonzalez, that, I think, was the most questionable. Leading up to the game, I question, are they going to leave him on the boundary, or is he going to follow Puka, who is one of the primary outside receivers to the Rams? Now, I like the idea of following Puka, and I feel like even after a review, I'll probably lean the same way. One thing I will note, though, Everybody questions, well, why don't you just automatically put Gonzo on Puka Nakua? First of all, I think it's notable that in the second half, Puka didn't do much of anything. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be curious to go back and see what exactly happened in the first half compared to the second. But also with the Rams, it's not just like, you know, the Patriots have a bit more of a simple offense where the formations aren't anything too crazy. The Rams have one of the more unique systems. There's a lot of uh, plays where you'll have three receivers to one side, a tight end on the other, which is why you saw Christian Gonzalez line up against Cooper Cup quite a few times in the slot and actually come up with some stops so I didn't fully fully hit the game plan but when you had Puka popping off you're thinking okay yeah why in the world is Demarcus Covington not adjusting the plan my perspective was just because of how detail oriented the Rams are it might have just been a situation where you know what it's easy to say that if you're going man to man but you can't play all man Mike Pellegrino actually mentioned right. that earlier this week you got to play zone or else you're just going to run pick pick, uh, pick plays and man beaters all game so my perception was maybe they thought if they end up saying Christian you follow Puka with all the motioning he does it might have put Gonzalez in some tough spots where he didn't really know how to respond to certain things again we can ask Demarcus Covington more about that couldn't really get that much in depth with Gerard Mayo when the post came but again I did not like the decision. I don't like it in retrospect either. I just want to try to add some nuance because I don't think these coaches are stupid. I think Covington would have made the adjustment if it was as straightforward as we think, but that'll be a question for later on when we actually speak to him on Thursday. Thursday, Thursday sounds about right for our interview with Demarcus Covington. Another questionable decision on the defensive side of the football. First or the second half starts rather. Patriot zero blitz. Matthew Stafford. Yeah. He allows they allow him to pick his poison. He hits Cooper Cup for a 69-yard touchdown on Jonathan Jones. What did you make of that decision? What do you make of the execution on the play? Yeah, so that was another one I definitely did not like. They were having a lot of trouble getting to Matt Stafford in the first half. I think there were only three quarterback hits on him, despite the fact they had backup tackles on each side of the line of scrimmage. And then they also had Barmore and Yannick Ngakwe back. You were thinking, obviously, Barmore coming back from a very serious blood clots injury. Mm -hmm. uh, so you didn't necessarily expect he was going to be anywhere near 100%, but you thought there was going to be more pass rush. I don't like that that's how they did it, though. And not only that, all right, the call is made. You probably would have given up a chunk play to Cooper Cup. For Jonathan Jones, a, a veteran who is so intelligent and usually is on point in those in those moments, to try to go for the breakup rather than making the tackle, Bill Belichick would always preach, if you are alone, you cannot go for the ball because if you don't make the tackle, it's a touchdown. Right. We literally saw the worst-case scenario. I was really disappointed in Jonathan Jones' execution just as much, if not more, and then I was disappointed in the decision to zero blitz such a smart veteran quarterback a couple other decisions that uh, go into the question mark column for the Patriots in this loss uh, two of them had to do in the kicking game first mm -hmm. and foremost second quarter Joey Sly has the ability to kick a 54 yard field goal instead the Patriots decide to kick it into the end zone touchback they don't give their kicker who has been one of their better players on offense this season frankly a chance to get three points instead they decide to punt should they have given Sly the chance to kick the field goal or do you think they made the right decision to punt the football so we actually heard from Sly and Gerard Mayo Gerard Mayo acknowledged the wind and pregame execution were a factor, and Joey Sly was missing field goals from 48 and 53 yards in pregame. He was making some, but those two misses, I think, did factor in. Sly also acknowledged that that might have been just outside of his range. 
So I didn't hate it at the time because I knew that Sly had struggled earlier on. And that's also so early in the game. I don't like that being an excuse for why the Patriots lost. Now, as it gets tighter in the game, those decisions mean more and more. And obviously, you know, you could talk butterfly effect and what happens if they right. kick the field goal and make it obviously. But at that point in the game, I don't hate playing field position, especially when the Patriots, I believe at that point, were up 7-0. Mm -hmm. So whether they were up 7-0 or whether it was a tie game or close, whatever, it was still a very close game. So I don't really think that was the death knell. And again, because of how Sly executed, he even acknowledged that, yeah, he kind of understood the decision. I didn't hate it, to be honest. I actually, I thought it was worse that they tried to get a delay of game to get Bryce Berenger more <laughs> yeah. room, and then he kicks a touchback again. The decision is one thing. The execution is another. If Bryce Berenger takes advantage of that field position, maybe the Rams are pinned, and maybe the defense capitalizes on that, gets a quick three and out, or at least the Rams don't get near midfield. But again, you make the decision, all right, now we got to execute. Patriots didn't do it. Final coaching question mark as we wrap this one up. Two wrapped into one. Patriots are headed into the end zone on the six-yard line. Uh, they run it twice. Third down, they don't get it. They have a fourth down, fourth and short. They decide to kick the field goal. Still makes it, it I think it went from a two-possession game to a two-possession game. Then they make the stop on defense. Great. Go down, uh, score a touchdown mm -hmm. off of it. They kick an extra point instead of going for two. They, make it, they try and make a nine-point game, an eight-point game. They end up getting the field goal blocked, and it's still a two-possession game. What did you make of that sequence? Do you think the coaches could have put these players in a better position there? Yeah, I didn't like on the third and short when they decided to run the ball from an under-center look. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking, you have Drake May. He could throw it or he could run it. I don't like the idea of making it so obvious that you're trying to run right up the gut. So that was one where I thought it was definitely questionable. Gerard Mayo saying they would have gone for the fourth and one but didn't like it as a fourth and two. I don't hate it. You know, okay. this was he mentioned that's a situation that they came up earlier in the season and he made a different call. I really struggle. I, I would have wanted to go for it. The models all said to go for it, but coaches get critiqued for this, whether they go for it or where they don't. Mm -hmm. That's one of those gray areas for 80% like of the time. I'm just going to say, you know what? I'm going to trust the research and the scouting that you did because I don't have the same in-depth knowledge. Different when it's against Patrick Mahomes or somebody <laughs> like that where you're terrified to give them the ball right. with the potential last possession. But that was one, once again, where it looked like a Lacita Smith and Demontre Jacobs were responsible for not blocking their man, get the field goal blocked right up the middle. You absolutely cannot have that happen. So once again, looks way worse in hindsight when not only do you make the call that maybe doesn't put the team in the best spot, but then they don't execute on top of it and you miss out on points. A lot of coaching question marks in this one, but at the end of the day, they did have a chance to go down and score a touchdown in this, in this, and win this one. Unfortunately, they don't get it done here in Foxborough. Patriots fall to 3-8 and eight on the season. Coaching going to continue to be under the microscope this season, but Patriots still have the same amount of wins this year that they did, did all of last season, so we're headed in a little bit of the right direction. Let's give these guys a chance to see what they can continue to build, because you do have Drake May looking like the best rookie quarterback of this season. Uh, keep it here on Patriots Press Pass. Patriots headed to Miami next week, and we'll have you covered all week long here on Press Pass, so make sure you rate, review, and subscribe, and like this video for all of your Patriots coverage. Thank you.